So the yin yang is one of the oldest symbols in Chinese religion and philosophy, and it's packed with an incredible amount of wisdom just by how simple it actually is. I've learned that understanding its deeper meaning can actually help you have a deeper appreciation for life itself. Not only by helping you cope with the everlasting cycle of change that everything in the universe is subject to, but also by helping you appreciate the ups as well as the downs of life, by helping you know that they actually create each other and that you couldn't have one without the other. So in this video, I'm here to help you understand the deeper meaning behind the yin yang symbol so you can actually apply its lessons to your daily life. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so when we're looking at the symbol, we're basically looking at three things. A visual representation of the process of creation as imagined by Chinese metaphysics, a diagram depicting the everlasting cycle of change that everything in the universe is subject to, and a pattern that shows us how this cycle of change unfolds in an everlasting dance between opposites known as the yang and yang. Or really, yin yang, because they're both part of the same thing, and you can't have one without the other. Okay, so before understanding yin and yang, we first have to understand this larger concept that the yin yang symbol is actually embedded in, which is known as both wuji and taiji. In Chinese philosophy, it is said that before name and form, before light and darkness, before movement and stillness, there was simply wuji, often translated as the infinite and nonpolar. Wuji is often thought of as the nothing that came before everything, and it's often represented by an empty circle. Now it is said that from this principle of Wuji manifested the principle of Taiji, which is often translated as the supreme polarity. So while Wuji is the non-dual, non-polar, infinite thing that came before everything, Taiji is basically the supreme polarity that represents everything. So while Wuji is the nothing, Taiji is the everything. Now Taiji is essentially the yang-yang dance that gives rise to everything in the universe. Or as Chinese philosophy might say, it is that which gave birth to the 10,000 things. Okay, now let's actually move on to the yin yang because that's where I think a lot of the deeper meaning is actually encoded in. Now in a general sense, I think the yin yang could represent this dual world that we live in which emerged from the non-dual reality, which unlike that non-dual reality, it's always subject to change because of an eternal dance between opposites known as the yin and yang. And you can kind of see why change actually comes into this yin yang principle because in wuji there's literally just undifferentiated nothingness so there's no difference for there to actually be change and transforming while in the yin yang there is yang and yang which mutually go together but because there's this differentiation between the two they can actually transform into pretty much everything that we see in the world so it is duality that allows to give rise to transformation because you can transform between creation and destruction, movement and stillness, light and dark, birth and death, and all the duality that we see in the world around us that we typically associate with yang and yang, which kind of makes up everything. I mean, that's what everything is. It's a part of yin, a part of yang, and it's a dance between the two that actually holds everything together. So in this way, yin yang is actually the archetype of all the complementary opposites in the universe. You know, like male and female, light and dark, and so on. Now we'll get more into what complementary opposites actually means later on, but right now we're going to get more into the diagram itself. Now as you can see in the diagram, at the extremes of the white and black swirls, there's two dots. There's a black dot in the white swirl, and a white dot in the black swirl. This represents how yin always contains within itself the unmanifested version of yang, and yang always contains within itself the unmanifested version of yin. So the dot basically represents the seed that gives birth to its polar opposite. So yin contains a seed of yang, and yang contains a seed of yin. So you can think of this as life always containing the seed of death, and death always containing the seed of life or creation always containing the seed of destruction, and destruction always containing the seed of creation. Now this seed is very important because while the yin and yang are always changing in this eternal dance, the seed actually allows yin to give birth to new yang, and yang to give birth to new yin. And it's placed there to allow life to continue in this eternal dance between opposites. Now the placement of this dot is also very important. As I said before, it's basically at the extreme of each swirl. 
This tells us that when any process reaches its peak, it transforms into its polar opposite. This is very similar to a quote from Avatar The Last Airbender, which basically says that at any time anything reaches its extreme, that's the point when that process is most open or subject to change. Aang. You have finally connected with your spiritual self. How? When we hit our lowest point, we are open to the greatest change. So again, this shows us that when yang reaches its peak, it transforms into yin. And when yin reaches its peak, it transforms into yang. And they always go in this eternal dance between opposites that basically transforms everything in the universe. As the Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius once beautifully put it, everything's destiny is to change, to be transformed, to perish, so that new things can be born. Although all of this may seem very abstract, you can actually notice how this principle actually manifests in everything that we see around us. A very simple example is that when winter reaches its peak, it transforms into spring. And this creates the endless cycle of the seasons, which basically transforms all of life. Another example is that when day reaches its peak, it starts transforming into night. And again, this is what creates the endless cycle between day and night. So again, this diagram shows us that yin and yang always transform into one another. And this is essentially what gives rise to everything in the universe. So in this way, you can think of the yin and yang as the heartbeat of the universe, according to which everything in this universe is always constantly beating. This heartbeat is the eternal cycle of life and death, creation and destruction, movement and stillness, sound and silence, and every duality that we see around us. So to summarize, what the yin-yang symbol essentially shows us is the rhythmic flow of change in the universe, which always flows in this eternal dance between opposites. And so in this way, change is also another essential teaching behind the yin-yang symbol. It reminds us that change governs everything in the universe, from the various processes of nature, to your ever-changing states of mind, to even your life situations. It is the one thing that literally nothing can escape, as everything in the universe is subject to its passing. This is also one of the paradoxes of life, because it kind of tells you that change is the one thing in life that always remains constant, but yet the very definition of change is to not remain constant, to always change. So in other words, the only thing that always remains the same is change, but the very definition of change is to not remain the same. Despite everything that changes, change itself will never change. As Greek philosopher Heraclitus said, change is the only constant. And when you start thinking about change in relationship to the universe, you start to realize that the word universe actually just means change. If you split the word universe into its two root words, you get the Latin words unus and verter. Unus means one and verter means to turn, to roll, or to change. So essentially the word universe means one turning, one rotating, one changing. Now, as I said before, yin and yang are basically the archetypes of all complementary opposites in the universe, from light and darkness, birth and death, creation and destruction, movement and stillness, male and female, good and evil, and so on. Now, this word, complementary, is actually very important. It's actually one of the main concepts behind yin and yang. Now, according to Merriam-Webster, complementary essentially means related to each other in such a way that one completes the other. In this way, the word complementary is trying to show us that yin and yang go together. They create each other, and you can't have one without the other. For example, we only know light in contrast with darkness, and we can only know good in comparison to what is bad. So in this way, light and dark and good and bad create each other, and they only exist in relation to one another. They are like two relative extremes that define each other on a single scale and only differ in the way that this scale expresses itself. One very good example of this is just hot and cold. There are two temperatures which define each other 
and they're just expressions of the same underlying thing, temperature. Another example is just the entire concept of the Force in Star Wars. I mean, when you think about it, George Lucas literally made a light side and a dark side of the Force. But at the end of the day, they're just expressions of the same underlying force. And the dark side and the light side only exist in relation to one another. If you've read the Kabbalion, this is kind of what it says already in there. It says, I think, that like and unlike are the same in nature, but only varying in degree. So like, again, hot and cold, they're the same in nature. They're both temperature, but they only vary in degree between hot and cold. In this way, you can think of yin and yang like the front and back of a coin or the two poles of a magnet. They're both inseparable from one another. And at the end of the day, they're both part of the same underlying thing. I mean, think about it. It's impossible to divide the poles of a magnet. If you cut a magnet in half, the two halves don't become a north pole and a south pole. Instead, each half creates two new poles. They basically just become two smaller versions of the same magnet. And you can keep slicing the magnets infinitely. And again, you will always turn out with magnets that have two poles. Because again, the poles only exist in relation to each other. And they're inseparable from one another. And something that you may notice is that because they're inseparable, like the front and back of a coin, they're also essentially one. This is why duality is always secretly oneness. Another place that you find this principle is actually in quantum physics. In quantum physics, there's something that physicists think is basically at the base level of the universe, which they call the quantum vacuum, or sometimes the zero point field. You can think of the quantum vacuum like this. Essentially, when you remove all the particles and everything in the universe, you're not left with empty space. Empty space itself doesn't actually exist. What exists in empty space when you remove all the matter from it is basically like a sea of fluctuating energy, which is called the quantum vacuum. Now, the interesting thing is that from this sea of energy, particles actually come into existence. And just like the yin and yang, quantum physics tells us that particles always come in pairs. So there basically exist matter and antimatter, or particles and antimatter particles. And they're both created mutually from this fluctuating energy. And just like the yin and yang, these particles are the same in nature, but varying in degree. They always have the same mass, but only an opposite electric charge. And again, they only exist in relation to each other, and they arise from the quantum vacuum in mutually existing pairs. So again, to summarize, the yin-yang symbol shows us that despite how different two things may seem, those things always coexist in relation to one another. So essentially, the entire universe is just a system of inseparable differences. And it is through this interaction of differences that everything exists as it does. Now, from everything I've said, I'm sure you can already tell the difference between how Eastern religion sees the universe, how some of Western religion see the universe between, at least in relationship to this duality principle. I think the key difference is that in Western religion, life is seen as kind of an eternal battle between dualities, whether it be God and the devil or good and evil. And in Eastern religion, it's an eternal dance between them. One cool thing that I also noticed, even just when thinking about the concept of God and the devil, is just when you look at those two words, devil, when you take out the D, what does it say? Evil. God, when you put an extra O in there, what does it say? Good. So again, it's just kind of reinforcing this whole idea that there's this two dual things and they're always constantly fighting instead of existing in relation to each other. And it's not one. And again, in Western religion, one only creates the universe while the other one is just there to kind of fuck it up. But in Eastern religion, it's not necessarily that there's a God. Okay, so my camera died, so I think I'm not supposed to talk about that. But I think the key point here is just that while we have this notion in the West that you have to cultivate the good and destroy the evil, in the East, through this wisdom of the yin-yang symbol, we can understand that 
you can't really do that. It's kind of impossible because they only exist in relation to one another. So if you try to destroy good, inevitably you're going to destroy evil because again, one is contained within the other and you can't have one without the other. So even though life may seem like a constant battle between good and evil, light and darkness, positive and negative, and all the dualities, the yin-yang symbol allows us to understand that life is more like an eternal dance between them. And it's much more harmonious and in balance than all of us really think it is. Okay, now let's move on to some lessons that you can actually take from these teachings. And I think they're ones that I personally have tried to apply to my life just to make sense of everything better and to cope with change and also just the ups and downs of life, you know, just how everything really is a roller coaster. You're never in one place. Life is never constant. It's always changing. And despite that, you can learn to let go and also appreciate the ups as well as the downs of life. Because in the end, like the yin yang symbol shows us, they create each other. And you could not have an up without a down. You can have good days without bad days. You can have love without hate. You can have just everything. It's all there and exists mutually. So you can even appreciate the things that you don't typically appreciate them. Because without them, the things that you do appreciate probably would not exist. Okay, so lesson one, appreciate. So the yin yang symbol shows us that you can only be aware of things by contrast. So like I said, you could only be aware of light and contrast or in comparison with darkness, or you can only be aware of good in comparison to bad, which I guess a better way to put it would be that you can only be aware of things in contrast with their polar opposite. So when you're going through tough times, you have to ask yourself, if there were no bad moments, then how could you ever be able to appreciate and know the good ones? Because at the end of the day, the bad moments are what creates the good ones. It's this balance that kind of, when you have this bad moment, it pushes the good moment up and actually creates it. It's kind of like a, a seesaw, I guess. So even in those bad moments, how bad they may be, at the end of the day, how bad they are actually determines how good your life will be afterwards. So essentially, we owe all of our happiest moments to all of our worst ones. This shows us that life is essentially about experiencing pain, suffering, and sadness in order for us to appreciate and know love, gratitude, and happiness. So you can think that every time we suffer, we do so because... It's there to make us appreciate the world for what it is. Okay, so lesson two, let go. Since the yin yang symbol essentially shows us that everything in the universe is always subject to change and nothing is permanent but change itself, it also shows us that clinging to things is pretty much an illusion. Whether that be people, material possessions, or even situations that you have trouble letting go of. So there's nothing to make yourself worry about clinging onto, whether it be that girl that dumped you in the past, or that job that you could have had, or that situation that didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it's all just gone. It's temporary, it's gone with change, it always transformed into something else. So. Why would I tell you to let go of it? Because at the end of the day, there's nothing to let go of. It's already gone. So you can just not even let go because you don't have to. As one of my favorite Eastern philosophy teachers said, you don't have to let go because there's nothing to hold on to. Okay, lesson three, flow. So because everything in the universe is always subject to change and it always flows in this eternal cycle or dance between opposites, this kind of shows us that the yin and yang is essentially just the flow of life itself, the roller coaster that we're always on every second of our lives. It's the ups and downs, the highs and lows, and everything in between. So this essentially shows us that one of the keys to life is actually to learn to accept change rather than to resist it. 
you know, to flow with the flow of life rather than to force yourself against it. Because since change is the only constant in life, when you resist change, what you're doing is essentially resisting life. So in that way, whatever situation you're in, whether it be a good one or bad one or whatever it is, remember that it's always going to be on that roller coaster of life itself. You're always going to be in that constant flow of the river. So rather than trying to swim against it, just flow with it. Accept what is in any situation you are in, rather than trying to be somewhere that you're not or somewhere where you're not. So when in moments of doubt or uncertainty about what is going on around you, you can simply take a moment to take a deep breath, notice your surroundings, and accept everything that is going on in that present moment. And this simple act of acceptance instead of resistance is the first step in overcoming your problem or your life situation. Because most of the time, these experiences are necessary for growth and transformation. And they make us who we are, which is an ever-changing being which is always growing and transforming in union with the flow of life. So again, despite whatever situation you may be in, always remember that because the universe is always subject to change and nothing but change will always remain, you can always remind yourself that despite whatever situation you are in, things will always change. As I think the Buddhist saying goes, this too shall pass. Okay guys, so I think that's the end of the video. Hopefully this isn't too long and hopefully you got all the wisdom that you needed to get out of this video and the yin yang symbol in general. I honestly think it's one of the most impactful symbols that you can know and really understand. And if anything, take this just as I guess a call to learn more about Eastern religion, the yin yang symbol Hinduism, Buddhism, which again has pretty much a lot of the essential teachings about the yin yang. One of the main ones is just how everything is impermanent or always subject to change. That's one of the main things that Buddha himself said. So I think that's it. I could maybe ramble on about other things, but I think at the end of the day, you probably got all you needed to get out of it. So I hope you have a good day. Enjoy your life. Hopefully I'll post more, vi more videos because I think I have a lot more stuff to talk about. I've been, like I said, wanting to make this video for a very long time. So yeah, hopefully you'll hear more from me soon and peace out guys. Love you.